for every, this is the second point, for every blue collar Democrat we will lose in Western PA, we will pick up two, three uh, moderate Republicans in the suburbs of Philadelphia. And you can repeat that in Ohio and Illinois and Wisconsin. It's the day after the 2024 United States presidential election, and it turns out that running to the right, parading around the Cheneys and promising nothing will change, wasn't the inspiring message the Democratic Party thought it would be. Unfortunately, we don't have the time or energy to gloat about how wrong the Democrats were about abandoning left-wing policy, Palestinians, and anyone with an ounce of humanity to pander solely to white women who in the end turned up for Trump just like they did last time, with no statistically significant shift. And that's because the Democrats didn't just lose, this guy won. Kamala is for they them. President Trump is for you. He's Hitler. And then they say he's a Nazi. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics. And I think they're the, and, and it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, by National Guard, or if really necessary, by the military. Now, I think everyone already knows how I feel about Donald Trump. If you don't, because YouTube only took last week's Trump video out of demonetization jail after the election was already over. Thanks guys. I have a whole video going into my feelings about Trump and the election that just passed that I'll link below when you'll be seeing a bit in front of you. In short, well, I keep trying to put into words how I feel about this absolute shit show, and I keep coming back to the words of Italian Marxist Antonio Gramsci in 1929 while living in Mussolini's Italy. Those being, the old world is dying, and the new world struggles to be born. Now is the time of monsters. They're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. Things are about to get very scary very fast, given how much power Trump is going to have to get his agenda through, what with him controlling the Senate and everything. Project 2025 and mass deportations are both terrifying enough, especially since the latter will almost certainly end up with him concentrating a bunch of immigrants together in camps. Beyond that, with RFK Jr. in charge of health, well, say goodbye to vaccines and to fluoride in your water. And on a related note, hello to tooth infections and polio. Elon Musk is going to be in charge of government efficiency, which if you've been paying attention to his political project, means doing to America what Javier Millet is doing in Argentina. Namely, completely gutting any function of government that helps anyone but the very richest, driving millions into poverty. Ministerio de Turismo y Deporte, afuera. Ministerio de Cultura, afuera. Ministerio de Ambiente y Desarrollo Sostenible, afuera. Ministerio de las Mujeres y Género y Diversidad, afuera. Ministerio de Obras Públicas, afuera. Aunque te resistas. Vamos a seguir por acá. Ministerio de Ciencia y Tecnología e Innovación. Algo bien del sector privado. Nada bueno salió del sector público. ¡Afuera! Ministerio de Trabajo, Empleo y Seguridad Social. ¡Afuera! Ministerio de Educación. Adoctrinamiento. ¡Afuera! Ministerio de Transporte. ¡Afuera! Ministerio de Salud. ¡Afuera! Ministerio de Desarrollo Social. ¡Afuera! And that's not even mentioning all of the times Trump quoted a certain failed Austrian painter. And this coming four years, at least, of Trump means a far-right Supreme Court forever, unless a new world currently struggling to be born emerges and topples the old world that has now officially entered its death throes. What I won't countenance in the wake of this, however, is the kind of shit I'm already seeing from mainstream media and from liberals and faux leftists both. And that's blaming minorities and wokeism for Trump winning. It turns out that running on these extraordinarily niche issues like gender fluidity or defunding the police or any number of things that people in places where I live get extremely excited about don't actually matter or frankly feel 
profoundly out of touch yeah. to ordinary Americans. I think this is a sweeping indictment of a progressive left that has gone so far that it alienates so much of the center of this country. There's a when we put pronouns after names and say she, her, as opposed to saying, you know what, if I call you by the wrong, wrong pronoun, call me out, I'm sorry, I won't do it again, but stop with the virtue signaling and just speak to people like they're normal. Already I've seen people on mainstream American TV saying that Harris lost because she should have run further to the right on trans issues. But she didn't mention trans people basically at all during her entire campaign. In fact, if you are trans, you'll know that she threw us under the bus, basically saying she'll leave it to the states to decide what to do with us. Are you still in support of using taxpayer dollars to help prison inmates or detained illegal aliens to transition to another gender? I will follow the law, and it's a law that Donald Trump actually followed. Pundits and Democratic staffers have also tried to blame Muslims, which is absolutely bananas, given, say, Dearborn, Michigan went to Biden by like 80%. And in response, the Democrats sent multiple people there to tell them that not only were they not going to save the family in the Middle East, quite the opposite, but that they were all basically scum. I understand why young Palestinian and Arab Americans in Michigan or think too many people have died. Since the, I, I get that, but... In future, the Democrats should think twice about sending Bill Clinton or the Cheneys to try and appeal to Muslim voters. But the thing is, if Project 2025 goes through, which is the plan, there won't be a next time. Democrats can go on TV blaming progressives as much as they want, and they have been. But the Democrats did not run a progressive campaign. <laughs> they made it clear the progressives weren't wanted, and they made it clear they didn't think they needed them. Much like Labour did in the last election in the UK. In both cases, the turnout dropped massively, and they hemorrhaged their base. In the UK, this resulted in Labour winning by default because the right wing split in two parties and the Tories had basically collapsed. Fuck off. In the US, the Republicans had not collapsed. And the US is even more firmly a two-party system than the UK, so if you decide that voters have nowhere else to go, they won't stay. Th they'll go. They'll go nowhere. And they did. They stayed at home, in droves, because you told them to. For every, this is the second point, for every blue-collar Democrat we will lose in Western PA, we will pick up two, three uh, moderate Republicans in the suburbs of Philadelphia. And you can repeat that in Ohio, in Illinois, in Wisconsin. Uh, the voters who are most out there figuring out what to do are not the blue-collar Democrats. They are the college-educated Republicans who lean Republican or are independent and in the suburbs. In fact, the people who are trying to find a narrative that fits about who lost this election for the Democrats need to contend with the fact that Trump actually got three million fewer votes in this election. He didn't get more popular, despite what a lot of media articles are saying. The problem is that the Democrats took an even bigger hit to their popularity, which, you know, will happen if you win an election promising to deal with the pandemic and let it rip through the population instead, if you promise to codify abortion rights and then don't do that, if you promise to forgive student debt and don't do that, if you promise to give money for pandemic relief and give only half measures and so on and so on. When you run as the status quo candidate and the status quo sucks, that's not going to enthuse people. And when you do what the Democrats did and actively denigrate your voter base, calling them terrorists for protesting the horrors in the Middle East, telling them their vote isn't needed, actively parading around with the Republicans of yesteryear, who they spent a decade fighting against, well, you encourage your base to stay at home. And this happened in the UK too. Turnout was atrocious in the last UK election, to the point where now, only a couple of months later, Labour are already polling below the Tories, after they suffered a historic defeat. And the worst part is, this Labour Party who engineered that shit show, a huge majority built on paper-thin margins, actively advised the Kamala Harris campaign. 
Morgan McSweeney, the ideas man behind Kiss Down was Operation, if you can call it that. And Jonathan Ashworth, a man so unpopular he lost his safe seat to an independent in a landslide election for his party, and instead of being kicked to the curb, was promoted to the head of a fucking think tank for the faction in power, led the transatlantic advice team. There's articles talking about how Jonathan Ashworth is giving advice to Kamala, the guy that lost a safe seat during a landslide to an independent, and the Democrats listened to them. Punish MPs is what the National the Muslim Vote Organization talked about. What kind of things happened to you? You sound pretty angry about this. Um, I was chased down the street, uh, uh, shouted at and screamed at for uh, 40, 45 minutes until I, until I had to seek refuge literally in a vicarage. And they waited for me outside the vicarage. And even when I came out of the vicarage, they were shouting at me with megaphones. And among their pieces of sage advice were, one, concentrate on winning over conservative voters. And two, make sure you let people know you don't like trans people. Both great recipes to ensure that your base comes out with enthusiasm. <laughs> Who could have seen this coming? Except for everyone. <laughs> the thing is, you could hardly even call this a Trump victory. It was a Democrat loss. If this wasn't in the context of a two-party system, Trump wouldn't have been directly rewarded for the failures of the incumbent party. He lost three million votes for God's sake. And now he basically gets handed ultimate power over not just the USA, but basically the entire world. Thanks, US imperialism. Clearly, this system is completely fucked. And that's before Trump's team actively dismantles it even more to ensure a star-spangled thousand-year Reich. Seriously, in 2020, Trump got 74 million votes. In 2024, according to projections, he got 71 million. He is less popular now than he was back then. But Harris got 66 million votes to Biden's 81 million. And don't get it twisted, that is almost entirely Joe Biden's fault. But the Democrats should have gotten rid of his decaying corpse instead of propping it up for two years like it's weekend at Bernie's so that they could commit horrific war crimes overseas and punish their citizens for daring to protest. They could have done something, but they didn't care to. By the way, I'm proud to be, as I said, the first vice president, first black woman, mm -hmm. served with a black president. And if you came in here looking to berate a trans person for existing, as if our mere presence on earth brings fascism, look at the reasons people voted, not according to your vibes or some Joe Rogan fan you'd be listening to on the bus. Look at the actual data. Nowhere in the top issues of those who voted for Trump or any of the Republicans or anyone for that matter, are trans people, gender issues, or anything of the sort. Inflation, the economy, immigration, sure, but trans people? You're either making that shit up, or you're hearing someone being bigoted and assuming that's why they're voting. But they're not, and they will openly tell you that's not why they're voting. Don't run on vibes when we have data. You don't need to speculate, because people were asked, and they clearly didn't give a second thought to trans people existing. If anything, the Republicans' focus on running anti-trans ads probably cost them a chunk of those three million votes they lost. You can't outright wing the Republican Party, though. And running to the right is just asking people to look at the two options and go, why would I vote for Diet Republican when I can just vote for Republican? Heck, Kamala Harris ran on Medicare for All when she ran in the 2020 primaries. If she had offered that, she probably would have won handily, because she'd have given the public something substantive to vote for that would actually make their lives materially better. Instead, she did everything she could to make corporate donors, lobbyists, and Republicans happy, including dropping her critiques of the rich on the campaign trail to please someone who just talked to her behind the scenes. And how do you keep these people happy? Well, you keep them happy by promising nothing except for that she's not Donald Trump. And lots of people don't like Trump, but they could not vote for Trump by not voting for him, which three million more people did this time. To convince people to take time out of their day to go out and vote for you, not just against Trump, but for you, for people especially that don't see the effects of politics in their day-to-day -day lives, you need to give them some reason that you will make their lives better. This is one of the reasons why black voters turn out in droves for the Democratic Party, because they see how politics affects their lives. The bottom line is, a lot of people won't vote for you unless you give them some reason that you will make their lives better.
Otherwise, what's the point? You can't run on harm reduction forever. And just to underline this, if you look at the way LGBT people voted, they voted 86% for the Democrats, a fucking key demographic without which they might have not won the last couple elections they did win, even after we were shoved aside to try and appeal to the same Republicans who implemented Don't Ask, Don't Tell, bathroom bills, drag bans, fought against gay marriage, and made the Don't Say Gay Bill and bans on transitioning in red states possible. <laughs> Queer people still turned out and voted for the Democrats. And what do we get in return? <laughs> Being thrown under the fucking bus. I wish it was surprising, but it's just bloody not. In the days following the election, the Democrats did what they always do, however, and blamed everyone but themselves. Because they have no material analysis, no instincts besides pleasing lobbyists and donors, and would throw every minority and every working class person into a meat grinder rather than address any of the things they did wrong. The Democrats can't fail. They can only be failed. Are they out of touch? No. It is the voters who are wrong. Democratic Congressman Seth Moulton specifically blamed trans people for this, telling the political editor for the New York Times, I have two little girls. I don't want them getting run over on a playing field by a male or formerly male athlete. But as a Democrat, I'm afraid to say that. Why would you have to? Look at the data. People don't give a shit. These culture war issues don't decide the election. People care about whether or not they can put food on the table. And when they can't, you need to promise to sort it out by going after billionaires like Bernie Sanders would tell you. But instead of doing that, instead of pointing out the actual people who were causing the people to suffer and saying you'll tackle the issue at its source, you know you don't want to solve their problems. You want those billionaires. You want their money. You want their approval. You want to line your pockets with their donor dollars and go to fancy dinner parties. So you see the Republicans doing what they always do, because they also want this, finding scapegoats, blaming minorities for this, scapegoating immigrants. And even though you know that they're not the cause of the suffering, quite the opposite, actually, they contribute massively to the economy and pay taxes despite not getting any benefits, because you're terrified of doing anything that might upset the richest fucking vampires in this society, you agree with the Republican framing and say you'll go after immigrants too, but you'll just do it a little bit less. And if you've told people immigration is the problem, the reason they can't eat, which it's not, but you won't tackle it as harshly as your opponent, you might as well be telling people to vote for your opponent. You can't accept the rights framing or you give them the upper hand. And that's before we get into the actual cruelty or the lies that lie behind this message. Instead, you need to solve the actual material problems. This is why people hate the Democratic Party. They aren't interested in helping people. They're only interested in preserving a system that is failing the working class, failing immigrants, failing minorities, failing everyone, and would rather let the ghouls in the Republican Party dictate policy on feeding all of these groups into the meat grinder than dare to change anything about a system that's clearly not fit for purpose. Now, clearly, some Democrats disagree with that and actually try and work on things, and then they're actively suppressed. But we'll get back to that. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. The point is, none of that has anything to do with whether trans people can play sports. If tomorrow, all trans people magically stopped existing, all of these problems would remain. If you solved the trans question, all of these contradictions would still exist. People would still be suffering. People would still not be able to afford food, to afford fuel, to afford housing. People would still be homeless. People would still be going broke from medical debt. People would still be being wrecked by climate disasters like the hurricane that just hit Florida. What do you do then? What do you do when your scapegoat has been destroyed? Because if you refuse to solve these problems, as the Republicans absolutely will never do, and the Democrats really don't want to do, you're going to have to go after another scapegoat, and then another, and then another, obliterating everyone different from you in a death spiral, not addressing any of the material conditions of people, which will continually get worse as this goes on, and simply channeling their anger, which would increase with this, towards minority after minority. Do you know what that's called? That's fascism. And unless you solve people's problems, this will keep happening. 
Deporting immigrants will not make groceries cheaper. In fact, it'll make them more expensive because most major farms run on immigrant labor. Punishing trans people will not make groceries cheaper. It will make absolutely no iota of difference. You need to improve people's material conditions or the contradictions of capitalism will build and build until either it gets overthrown or it decays into fascism. It's that fucking simple. But no, according to another Democratic congressman, Tom Susie, Democrats have to stop pandering to the left. Okay, so what's your alternative? Just embrace fascism like the Republicans have? If so, then what's the point in you even opposing them? Just join the Republican Party at that point. You clearly don't have any differences on principle, so piss off to the other side and let people who are actually interested in helping people build something better from the ashes of this broken mess of a party. But I shouldn't even be saying that, because I know what his alternative is, because his quote continues. And yes, his answer to solving the problems that plague the United States is, I don't want to discriminate against anybody, but I don't think biological boys should be playing girls' sports. Okay, will that reduce inflation? Will that get people out of college and medical debt? Will that provide housing? No, no, and no. Right? So you don't have an actual answer. You just want to be more openly bigoted. Well, you're already doing that. You're doing it right now. Congratulations. Has this solved your problems? No. And how is this going to help a single goddamn person who can't afford to eat, you useless fucking donkey? And beyond that, even if the Democrats would entirely shift to the right on trans issues, it wouldn't earn them a single extra vote because the Republicans are already institutionally transphobic and people who care more about that issue than anyone else, which is a tiny, tiny number of people, even smaller than the number of trans people there are, will just go out and vote for the party who did it first. The ones who they trust more to be transphobic, and that's the Republicans. All you'll do by abandoning trans people is hemorrhage the LGBT community from your base along with all the people that love us. A community who still vote for you in droves. And these are the instincts of the Democratic Party which led to this result. Taking their base for granted. And beyond that, actively being publicly resentful of their base. Muslims, Arabs, queer people, black people. The Democrats despise that this is their base. They are desperate to pander to white people despite the fact that they will never appeal to white people as much as the Republican Party does. And they spent this entire election campaign attacking their base, calling them anti-Semitic, campaigning on sending more bombs to the Middle East that will do unspeakable things to the families of the voters, implying they don't care about queer issues, refusing to take any action on climate change, over and over again, and for what? Did this yield any results? No! Kamala Harris didn't make any meaningful ground either with white women or with white people as a whole. She spent months trying to make herself appeal to Republicans, and in the end, she lost 1% of the Republicans that voted for Biden. Even with Trump down by millions of votes, they didn't go to her. And Biden actually promised to do some shit to improve people's lives. Now, he didn't do nearly enough of it, but he spent much less time appealing to Republicans than she did, and she did worse with them. And she lost 5% of the independent votes that he got as well, so what was the point in any of that? It certainly seems like the instincts of the Democratic establishment are completely out of touch with reality. In fact, the last time anyone offered anything meaningful to help anyone, apart from the rich, was when Bernie Sanders was running in the Democratic primary. And what do you know, he appealed to exactly the type of people Kamala thought she was appealing to by tongue-kissing the Cheneys and promising to build the wall. And he was offering a platform to the left of any Democrat since FDR, so clearly swinging to the left would work. And Democrats, when they swing to the right, lose. And yet they try this every goddamn time, every time they try to swing to the right, every time they think it's the magic bullet, and every time they're surprised that they lose, and they blame the left, say they've gone too far, and they need to become more racist. 
The fact that these people still have jobs despite having got every call wrong for years is a damning indictment of a party that would rather lose in a landslide than help out a single poor person begging for food and shelter. And if you don't believe me on that, look how they rallied around Joe Biden to prevent Bernie Sanders becoming the nominee in 2020. And look how that turned out. A second Trump term. Speaking of the senator for Vermont, in the wake of this horrific result, Bernie Sanders wrote a statement which, you know, resonated. Would that he had managed to ring the alarm bell on the stuff earlier instead of standing by Biden for four years, but I'll be nice for now and say, I don't know what was going on behind the scenes, just because I'm too tired to be angry at one of the least awful people in American politics. It should come as no great surprise that a Democratic Party, which has abandoned working class people, would find the working class has abandoned them. While the Democratic leadership defends the status quo, the American people are angry and want change. And they're right. They're right. And I'm not going to say that this is all, say, Jonathan Ashworth's fault. But given how much I have to see the fucker's face since he lost his seat and failed upwards, now appearing on TV every five seconds, just let me blame Jonathan Ashworth. I promise you have no idea how much I hate having to see this man's smug little face as he advises governments the world over to abandon the left and jerk off conservatives despite having lost a safe seat in a landslide. And one of these loud mouths shouted at me that I was genocide of John and everybody despised me. That was in front of my 10 year old. How did that make you feel? Uh, it made me feel pretty angry, but it made me feel pretty upset on behalf of my 10 year old little girl. Trans people are not to blame for this election result. If you look at the demographics, what happened was that white people, both white women and white men, voted massively for Trump, as they have in previous election cycles. The difference is that a lot of the white people who voted for Biden over Trump in 2020 stayed home in 2024. This has nothing to do with trans people. If you need to blame anyone, blame the Democratic Party establishment who insisted Kamala campaign to the right, that she bear hug Netanyahu and the Cheneys, that she abandon any of the progressive principles she ran on in the past. And when Democrats and their supporters bring up the trans issue as if it cost them the election, despite all of the data available showing it made absolutely no impact, keep in mind that Donald Trump himself has said that no one in person ever brought up this issue to him. He only started ranting about it because it got him cheers at his rallies. And if you think going right on an issue that only matters to the kind of people that physically turn out for Trump rallies is going to help you win, then I just have to assume that you've got the same kind of worms in your brain that made RFK Jr. think removing fluoride in the water is going to do anything but cause an epidemic of tooth infections. An article released the day I'm writing this puts this really well, outlining how many of Kamala Harris's mistakes were just repeats of the mistakes Hillary Clinton made almost a decade ago back when the idea of Trump becoming president was unthinkable. The same mistakes that made Democrats lose to Trump in 2016. Mistakes that the Democrats never learned from, and in fact, they've only doubled down on since, from the article itself. She should have promised to solve problems with our immigration system, with humane measures that provide a pathway to citizenship, rather than relying on expelling people by force. Instead, she declined to commit on supporting even the dreamers, and I was rather surprised when, during a debate with Donald Trump, instead of forcefully defending immigrants after his they're eating the pets line, she pivoted to a boast about how many former US military leaders had endorsed her. Many of Harris's mistakes were similar to those Hillary Clinton made in 2016. Like Clinton, Harris cozied up to billionaire donors. Mark Cuban, for instance, said he was delighted that Harris was abandoning Democrats' commitments to progressive principles and letting the business community propose the policies it wanted. Like Clinton, Harris and Tim Waltz made hubristic campaign stops in solidly red states like Texas and Kentucky, rather than spending the final days laser-focused in crucial battlegrounds. Like Clinton, Harris emphasized celebrity endorsements while failing to successfully court unions. Like Clinton, Harris focused too much on the danger of Donald Trump, and not enough on the reasons why she would be good at being president herself. Most importantly, like Clinton, Harris ultimately decided upon a strategy of trying to woo moderate Republican voters away from Trump, reasoning that it didn't matter if doing so alienated progressive voters and the Democratic base. Chuck Schumer, speaking of Hillary's 2016 strategy, infamously promised, For every blue-collar Democrat we lose in Western Pennsylvania, we will pick up two moderate Republicans in the suburbs in Philadelphia, and you can repeat that in Ohio, Illinois, and Wisconsin. In fact, they just lost the blue-collar Democrats and didn't pick up the Republicans. 
In 2024, Harris too aggressively touted endorsements from Republicans, promised to put a Republican in her cabinet. She even cited that as the answer to what she would have done differently from Biden, and went so far as to praise and embrace Dick and Liz Cheney. The strategy was an abject failure. And this isn't just on her either. This has been the nature of the Democratic Party for a long, long time. Even FDR opined on the very things that would bring the Democratic Party to ruin in the 1930s, back when the Democratic Party was a different beast entirely. And if we had the ability to learn from our history, you would think the Democrats would learn from the most popular president in US history's stark words, rather than deciding that meeting all the material conditions that generate fascism and promising to do nothing to make anyone's lives less awful was cool and good, actually. To spell it out, FDR warned an increasingly far-right world that the global rise of fascism was the result of democratic governments doing the opposite of the New Deal and protecting an economic status quo enriching a tiny handful at the expense of everyone else. Or, if you want the words of an actual leftist, how about the late great David Graeber? Everywhere the centrist argument that the left has to abandon its principles to fight fascism, leaving the only choice between corporate bureaucrats and Nazis, has led to the effect of empowering Nazis. That's a failed formula every time. Getting back to those who are still going to have to live through this time of monsters, I implore you to please not lose hope. It's normal to be angry. It's natural to grieve. But the struggle continues. And it must continue. If we want safety, happiness, heck, a future? For our loved ones, for everyone, for the gods and planet, I haven't even gotten into Trump's climate policy or lack thereof. The end of Bernie Sanders' statement I quoted from earlier, and just allowing for basic hope and humanity and a future for the people on Turtle Island besides just annihilation, <sighs> implies there is at least the beginnings of a plan on how to fight a Trump presidency, with all of the bullshit that will bring. I hope there is. I know there is. There's enough people, there will be something. Even though it seems bleak, there are enough people that will fight against this, that you should not lose hope. But even though this hope will come, do not wait on other people to do that for you. We can't do this alone. And more than anything, do not rely on the Democratic Party. If you think the Democratic Party is a vehicle that can bring about change, you and like-minded people will have to go out and make those changes. Even if I'm very cynical about the party being able to change at all at this point, but that's from having been a Labour employee in the past. Don't let me dampen your drive with my cynicism. To quote Gramsci once again, the challenge of modernity is to live without illusions and without becoming disillusioned. I'm a pessimist because of intelligence, but an optimist because of will. And I am an optimist. It is possible that these broken institutions can be changed and used to actually do some good. But do not rely solely on that, even if you want to try to make changes in that party. Organise outside, in your community, across your country, between communities. Make sure you have the backs of your neighbours, friends and anyone who needs it. Look after the black people, the trans people, disabled people, undocumented people, all people in your life. And keep them safe. It is possible, heck it has to be done, to build something new, something better. The old world is dying. The new world is struggling to be born. And you are that new world. What we do right now, as the old world dies, will determine what this new world will look like. Our communities, our ideas, our principles, our solidarity, our fights to build each other up and strengthen movements for justice, peace, and helping to improve the lives of others, from our neighbourhoods to those half a planet away. The new world will come. There's always a future. And you deserve to live to see it. To help build it. To leave this time of monsters behind. Solidarity is more important than ever. Organise so that we have networks that can survive Trump and whatever comes next. And on a note of spite, you deserve to live so much more than any of these fucking demons. Do not let Elon Musk or Donald Trump outlive you if you can help it. Live on, out of spite if nothing else. But know that I need you to live. Because you are beautiful.
You are perfect. And the world is a better place with you in it. Thanks for watching and good luck out there. Hey, thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you liked it, uh, please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you share it, it goes around. And if you uh, YouTuber put it on your community page, if you uh, have money, then throw it at me because I want to like to get out my big overdraft, please. I would like two thousand pounds from you. Yes, please, you. Uh, if you have it. If you don't, that's okay. Um, but. If you can help, you can give one-time donations on Coffee or PayPal. Links below as always, or sign up to my Patreon or YouTube memberships, where you get early videos, access to the members only Discord, my Nintendo Switch friend code, and exclusive content, such as interviews with YouTuber people and other things. In addition to all of that good stuff, you'll also, if you sign up, get your name read out at the end of each video like these lovely people. And their names are. Well, I, I say their names are. These probably aren't these people's actual names. Um, I'm assuming there's some sort of register that stops you being called um, things like Quesadilla de Tortilla Azul, Leron, Adam Lees, Daniel Nevels, no, not that Paul, MB, Madeline Aguirre, Ben Murphy, Lex Phoenix, Ender Kozitz, Janelle, Miradeeb, Jade Senior, Boa Ear, James W, Marva and Or, Tamsin, or Bob the Builder, 5445554. Maybe those are the actual names, like uh, Deborah Laboon, Vagish, Silzathenium, Vince Whitaker, Amelia Chain, Sarah, Jason Haig, Frank McManus, Susan Foster, Helena Riel, Sarira Whiskey, Orestria, Ali Catgirl, John N. Scully, Lloyd Luciente, Jason Cribbett, Shield Aiden, Robin Podolsky, Turtle Tomb, Casual Observer, Mantari, Courtney Burmack, Sleepy Slug, Philippa Tabroga, Soma Piglet, Brain Douche, Artie Wolf, Greg Noble, Diana McMillan, Geraldine Regalado, Alexandra Lilly, Howard Lott, Nerony Scarton, and Joey Cobalt. Um, but those aren't my names. Down on your knees, you don't look so tall. Open your eyes and the empire fall.